Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bringing you uh, another video here from the other shop. Today I'm going to be making a bandsaw table for my porta band. So you guys have probably seen something similar to this before if you're into fabrication projects. Um, but I don't have room in my garage to fit a normal size bandsaw or even a benchtop bandsaw because uh, I just don't have that much room with the amount of project cars that I have. So I bought a porta band and I bought some uh, 3 16 thick steel plate that I'm going to be cutting a couple holes in and a slot in order to fit the bandsaw blade through and then I'm going to be using some scrap aluminum to make some table legs basically to hold this up. So I'm going to be using the wire EDM and I'm also going to end up using uh, one of the lathes over in the corner and I'm going to use a CNC mill and uh, I'll take you guys along for the ride while we're doing it. First uh, I got to prep this plate so the EDM does not have the capability to pierce holes through a material so you have to have a hole pre-drilled so as you can see maybe I've marked out where my holes need to go and I'm gonna go over to a vise real quick and put two eighth inch holes in this. Got the plate set up in the uh, clamp down to the table. Got my two holes right there. Um, they don't have to be perfect because obviously the EDM is gonna adjust for it but they have to be close to the location that you tell the EDM to feed the wire through the material. This machine is super, super precise. So as you can see here up on the screen, this machine goes down to five decimal places. So it's really overkill for what I'm doing, but it makes it super easy to do. And if I had a water jet or a laser cutter that was half this precise, I would be using it because it probably cut quicker, but this is what I got. So now, uh, I'm going to set up the uh, program for this and I'm going to try and talk you guys through like what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, for those that don't know what an EDM is, um, I believe EDM stands for electrical discharge machine or machining. Um, so it uses a 10 thousandths thick brass wire to run a current through it and remove material as it's cutting. Um, it doesn't actually touch the material. It ends up um, having a slight air gap to it the whole time. So you're, um, your wire never ends up contacting your workpiece. If it does end up contacting your workpiece, that's usually not good because it's going to ground out and then at that point um, it's going to break the wire and start over. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm going to let the machine set my axis rotation. So what that does is it will measure two points on the side of your plate or whatever workpiece you've put in here. It will measure two points and then it is going to touch that spot, move out, go up to your other spot that you've defined, touch that. And then at that point, it's going to um, basically give you an angle readout and it's gonna take your entire program that you drew and twist it so like what you drew is always going to be square to your part. So we'll uh, show you guys that here in a bit. All right, slight technical difficulties getting the wire to feed through this machine. Sometimes it likes to be finicky and sometimes it works without a hitch. So now we are going to set the axis rotation on this machine. So what I've done is I've set my distance to two inches between two points. It's going to go in that pattern, so it's going to touch the bottom, move up, 
touch again two inches above where it touched and measure and give me a resulting degree and set that to my axis rotation. So all I gotta do is click start and it's gonna do its thing. And there's my result. So I almost put this plate in completely square, um, but I was off 0.01 degrees. Now that we've done that, we're going to pick up this edge and set that as zero, and then also pick up this back edge and set it to zero. Now that tells me exactly where that corner is, but the way that my program is written, my zero zero is actually technically in there. But because I know where I want that hole to be based off my SOLIDWORKS model, I can cut the wire, manually move the machine over into this point, and then thread the wire through there and then start my machining process. So I'm gonna put the camera down and I'll pick you guys back up when I get that lined up. All right guys. As you can see, I have the wire threaded through that bottom hole. And then I have my program uploaded here. So the, the red arrow right here is where the machine knows that the wire is. It's basically where the head is. So it's gonna come in, cut this circle, cut the wire automatically, move up, thread the wire again, cut that circle, cut the wire, go out and then do this long U shape to give me the slot that basically the band, the blade is gonna feed through. So I'm uh, gonna click start on this. So now we'll see that this whole entire trough area is filling up with water. So this water is filtered so that it basically provides a electrical barrier between the plate and the wire itself so that they don't ground. Um, pure water does not carry electricity. Water that is full of other minerals and chemicals and other things of that nature that carries electricity so I can actually stick my hand in this while this is running and not shock myself uh, I won't do that of course but you know you can and uh, while this is cutting I'm gonna go over to the lathe and take you guys with me because unfortunately the way this is you can't really see what's cutting while it's running so I'm gonna go prep some of these uh, table table legs and uh, we'll show you guys that. So all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna, I'll show you on the tube that's not in there. So I'm gonna face off both ends so I know that they're flat. They've been bandsaw cut so they're not you know perfect. And then I'm going to use the tailstock to drill a hole and then I'll also tap it quarter 20. So I'm gonna time lapse you guys through this and I'll probably only show you one because it's just rinse and repeat after you do it that way. All right, now that we got that one done, all cleaned up we're just gonna fast forward till we get four more of them or sorry three more of them all right got all 
four done. Now, this is actually one that I've done as a test uh, prior to filming this to set up this code. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna run this code on the other three. And the whole purpose of this is so I have a flat to put a wrench on if for whatever reason the screws ever got stuck in this or you know i wanted to have it super tight i wanted to be able to put either an adjustable or actually these are sized to a 19 millimeter wrench which also pretty much fits at three quarters so we're gonna go over to a cnc mill and uh, start setting these guys up for the final process and we'll also trim them up to be the correct length so you guys have all seen me do uh, mill setup in my one of my previous videos so i'm not gonna walk you guys through that or time lapse you through it it's you know same process as over on a manual mill just you know i'm clicking buttons instead of zeroing out a digital readout so the only difference for what i'm doing today is i'm using a 5c collet and a 5c collet holder so this is square uh, so I'm going to run my program on one side of this, flip this block 180 degrees, and then run the same program again to give me two flats on the side of this that are perfectly aligned to each other. They make these holders in plenty of different shapes, and they make the collets in different diameters. The set that we have um, is in fractional inch sizes. So I'm using a one inch right now to hold this uh, one inch aluminum rod. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go do some of the setup work and then I'll bring you guys back and time lapse you through the actual program of this running. So, we got one wrapped up. It's all cut to length. Got two flats, fits a 19 millimeter wrench perfectly. Now let's uh, fast forward you through getting the uh, other two of them done. Got all four of them done. All the heights match. They're all ready to go. Holes tapped. Now we just gotta finish up with this plate. All right guys, the EDM has wrapped up what it's doing. Uh, so we now have our plate with two holes that are clearance holes for uh, M6 screws. And then our slot that our bandsaw blade will fit through. So now I gotta clean this up and get the water off this so it doesn't rust too badly. We're almost all done here. So got the plate all done. I countersank all the mounting holes. Unfortunately, with the, I tried to do this in the drill press, and as you can see, the drill press didn't really love it, so it turned them into hexagons. Um, did that on two holes, and then I thought better of it, and uh, just went to using a hand drill, and then you can see how they came out. Ooh, come on, focus otherwise so almost gonna wrap it up gonna switch it back over to uh, another time lapse and assemble this and
There it is. It's uh, not the not the sturdiest. I mean, it's okay. I might uh, change these to actually have feet on them, so like cut them in shorter or something like that, and get adjustable feet that go in there. That way, you can level it out on any surface. Because like the workbench that I have it on right now is not the levelest thing in the world like you can see that this doesn't even touch um, but overall I'm uh, pretty happy with it it's uh, definitely a good height the cord doesn't get kinked underneath it too badly so I would uh, call this project a success got the bandsaw table all back home and kind of ran out of time last night once I got home so I didn't get a chance to use it or try it in any way or even see how well it fit on my workbench so I'm uh, gonna do that right now um, a lot of the companies that make these kits or these tables for porta bands uh, they use a velcro strap basically to hold the trigger so I don't have one of those so I'm just using a zip tie to keep the trigger pulled all the way um, the particular bandsaw that I have is variable speed so I can adjust it when I want to and then so it's not just running constantly I have a power strip on the front of my bench that is switched so I'm just gonna use that and uh, we're gonna try this puppy out That was only eighth inch thick steel, but still cut like butter. I mean, this is even warm and I just cut that. So definitely happy with it. And as you saw at the end of the video while I was at the other shop, you know, I said that it kind of wobbled um, on that bench top. But at home on my work surface here, which is, you know, good plywood that hasn't been used and abused, this does not move so maybe as a future improvement I'll put adjustable legs on it or if you know like one of my friends wants one or something like that I'll uh, modify these so that they have adjustable feet but overall I'm pumped with this and this will make this will make me be able to fabricate exhaust in my own garage at this point I mean that's the whole purpose for doing this is so that I can cut exhaust tubing um, so yeah, now we're one step closer to putting a, an exhaust on the Mark IV and I think all I need now is uh, a bottle of Argon. So, oh, and tubing would help too. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and uh, we'll see you next time.